Hey there, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my home and my kitchen. You guys, thanks so much for all your emails asking me for particular recipes. I have a list going and I'm going to start getting to those very soon. But one request I get a lot is about the ingredients that I use. And top of that list is chicken stock. And if I'm not uh, making a chicken stock, then I like to buy like the Wolfgang Puck, a really high quality organic chicken stock. But today I'm going to show you how to make one that's really easy from scratch at home and it's better than anything you can buy in a store. So let's get started. So homemade chicken stock, it's really easy and there's really only a short list of ingredients. And what you'll need to start is four pounds of chicken parts. Um, like if I'm cutting up a chicken and I cut off the wing tips, I'll throw those in a freezer bag and keep, in, keep them in the freezer. But also chicken legs, if you can find those on sale, just stick them in your freezer. When you get ready to use them, just cut them up, you know, like in two or three parts per chicken leg and that works great. So I have four pounds of chicken parts. Um, aside from that, you're gonna need two quarts or eight cups of water. You're gonna need about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of vegetable oil. Um, the vegetables you need, I like to add vegetables to my stock. It makes it sort of a rounded, nice flavor. And you'll need about a cup and a half of coarsely chopped carrots. These are about half inch um, pieces. About a cup of um, coarsely chopped celery and about one and a half cups of coarsely chopped onions. And that's that. Um, aside from that, you'll need two or three bay leaves, depending on their size. About a teaspoon and a half of dry thyme. If you have fresh, use about two teaspoons of fresh thyme. And about a half a teaspoon of the black peppercorns, just whole peppercorns, not ground. And two teaspoons of salt. And what we need to do to get this started in a large size stock pot that we have right back here, just go ahead and turn your heat on and get that heated up and add your vegetable oil. While we let that get heated up, what we're going to end up doing is um, sauteing all of our vegetables at one time. We're going to remove those, put them into a pot or a bowl, then half of the chicken will go in, we'll saute that, get it brown, take it out, and do the, third, the second portion of the chicken. Just so nothing kind of steams, it all is going to get a nice sort of caramel color on it. Okay, the oil is nicely heated, so in go all of our vegetables. The carrots, the celery, and the onions. And I'm working over high heat here, keeping an eye on it. If it starts to brown too quickly, I'm going to reduce the heat just slightly. But what I want to do is get a nice caramel color on these, so I'm going to let them go for probably between three to five minutes. vegetables in the pot for about five minutes now. They're getting slightly caramelized, which is what we want. So out they're going to go into a bowl. We're going to go back into the pot after we get some of this chicken sauteed off. So get that out. Pot goes back into your heat. And then we're going to add half of our chicken. So half of the four pounds goes in. We're going to saute that. So the chicken was been in here for about five minutes. It just lost its paintness, and that's really all we're looking for it to do. So that's going to come out, just in there with our rest of our veggies. And that chicken skin has so much fat in it that you really don't have to add any more fat after you've sauteed your vegetables. So the second part of the other two pounds of the chicken is going to go right in. And we're going to let this go for about five minutes. The chicken was in there for about five minutes. So what I'm going to do now is just add this chicken and the vegetables back into our pot. And you guys, it, I wish you could smell this, but I really do hope you'll make this at home because it smells and tastes fantastic. So we're just going to give this a stir up. Reduce our heat down to just, be just below a low, so medium low. Put the lid on it and let it sit there for about 20 minutes. The chicken will start to release its juices, which is going to add to the final flavor of this, this dish, and it's going to be fantastic. I'll be back in 20 minutes. So our bones and the chicken parts and the vegetables were all in here for just over 20 minutes, so that's perfect. So now what we want to do is just add our bay leaves, the thyme and the peppercorns, two teaspoons of salt, and I'm using a kosher salt here. You could, by all means, use a sea salt if you like. And then our two quarts of water. 
Then I'm going to raise this heat back up to a medium high, put the lid on and bring it to a boil. Once it boils, I'm going to reduce the temperature down to a simmer and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Alright, so our chicken has been on the stove for about 20 minutes with the water, the spices, and the salt. What I've done here is actually taken a large bowl and fitted that with a large colander. Because what I'm going to do is drain the stock through the colander so when I remove that, the stock will be left behind. So all we have to do is grab this off the stove and just carefully pour it as hot right into that colander. And the chicken and the vegetables at this point have given all their flavor off to the stock, so there's really no, no use for that, so those will just be discarded. So what I'm going to do is remove this colander, discard all the solid. Okay, so I've removed the colander, the stock is left behind, and it looks and smells fantastic. And what you'll see already is that a lot of the fat and the oil from the chicken skin it's going to start to rise to the top. So what I'm going to do is cover this and put this in the refrigerator at least eight hours or so. Um, overnight is just fine. And then tomorrow when I come back, the fat will have solidified and I'll be able to scrape that off and I'll show you how to do that in the morning. So our chicken stock was in the refrigerator overnight and just as I mentioned, this top layer of all the fat will actually solidify slightly. So what you'll be able to do is just take a spoon right in here and remove that layer. It's really easy. And as you can see, it just pulls right off and I just pop that right down the disposer in the sink. So once you get all that fat skimmed off the top, um, your chicken stock is essentially ready to go. What you'll notice is that this will be a little gelatinized, a little kind of a jelly texture. And that's just due to the um, natural gelatin that was in the chicken bones that we cooked in that in the stock. Um, so what I do is I'll portion this out in probably two cup containers. If you're going to use this within a week, you can keep it in the refrigerator. Otherwise you'll need to store it in the freezer. So I just take two cup containers freeze it and then as I need it I'll just defrost it and use it. So enjoy this great recipe for chicken stock. I really hope you'll enjoy it. And as always, please feel free to email me at scottinoregon at comcast.net if you've got a question about any of my recipes or want to see me make a recipe especially for you. I'll be happy to. Okay, have a good day. Bye.